using Eclipse to debug a mainframe application. This is first in a series of videos on debugging MSS applications. Now this acronym, MSS, inside Microfocus, means mainframe subsystems. That is, those applications that use JCL or Kix or IMS or PL1. These videos use Enterprise Developer 2.2 Update 2, which is the current version as of this video production. Previous versions will be very similar, but may not work exactly the same way. We will debug MSS applications that have already been ported from the mainframe and are running on Windows or Unix under Enterprise Server. Enterprise Server is the application server under which MSS applications must run on Windows and Unix. In order to demonstrate debugging, we need something to debug. For this, we will use the JCL demo sample code and tutorial provided with the product. This is a suitable, relatively simple MSS application. First, we will look at the Microfocus documentation for the JCL demo tutorial. And then we'll actually run this uh, sample code without debugging it first to see how it works. And from then finally we'll debug it. Here is how I recommend that you look at the documentation. You use a browser and you go to documentation.microfocus.com. When you first come into the documentation, you see all the Microfocus products here. So this is the top level of the documentation. The product that we're going to be using is subordinate to Enterprise here. It's actually uh, Microfocus Enterprise Developer 2.2 Update 2 for Eclipse. The reason I recommend looking at the documentation this way on the website is because this search thing works really well. It's very easy to search inside the docs. However, if we search when we can view all this documentation, we get too many redundant hits on the searches. We just want to search on this one product. To do that, I recommend using a scope. See so this thing here is scope. You click this. We're going to make a new scope. And we're going to choose Enterprise Developer 2.2 Update 2 for Eclipse. Having done that, our view of the documentation is, is limited to 2.2 Update 2 for Eclipse. And the search works. So I'm going to search for JCL Tutorial. This is the sample code and tutorial that we'll use for the video. It describes generally how the sample code works and how to set it up, how to build it and submit it and run it. During this video I will not actually perform all of these steps. I encourage you to do so. The documentation explains them all step by step and you can get to the point where the sample code is running. You will be able to follow along with this video without having performed the steps, but you can go back and do it later. When you have finished setting up the sample code according to the instructions, this is what you will have. Here's an Eclipse screen with uh, a JCL project, project name JCL. Here in the COBOL tab, the, the COBOL perspective, you see that we have two COBOL programs, a create and a read, and there's, uh, there's one JCL file. That, that's how the application is invoked by submitting that JCL file. There's also a directory here called newconfiguration.bin. This is where the compiled objects have been placed. So the two COBA programs have been compiled and exist here as DLLs. The reason this folder is named newconfiguration.bin is because of the project properties. So if I go here and say project properties, and if I look at the build configuration, COBOL, the output path for COBOL compilation is specified as being this directory, newconfiguration.bin. That's configurable. You, you, can, uh, you can change the build configuration to specify a different output path for the compiled programs. That's what it is by default. I mention this because we'll refer to it later. We also have this perspective called uh, navigation. This is more or less like a Windows Explorer, just a view of the files on disk. And we also have this perspective called the Server Explorer. Here we see an enterprise server running on our local host. And subordinate to that enterprise server are two regions, including this region, which we set up during the demonstration. If I right-click on this, 
I have the option of starting the region or let me show you it currently shows this region being associated with the Eclipse project. This is critical. In order for debugging to work, it's necessary that the project in Eclipse is associated with the region. And if I right click on this, I have the option of opening the administration page for Enterprise Server. So here's the Enterprise Server administration page and we see the region which we've set up. This is one way of looking at the Enterprise Server Administration screen. When you do it this way inside Eclipse, it, it opens inside a window inside Eclipse. But I think a better way is actually to open a browser and go to localhost 86 and view the Enterprise Server Administration screen in a separate browser outside of Eclipse. After having followed the directions and set up this region, we currently have JCL demo and I'd like to show you some of its properties. I'm going to click the edit button here. First of all, notice that in configuration information, it says ES environment JCL prod. It bothers to set an environment variable pointing to a certain place on disk. Later under MSS configuration and then under JES, in other words, JCL, this JCL prod is used, this environment variable is used for the location of the system catalog and the location of the data set. Using an environment variable like this, and then referring to it later in the configuration allows a region to be moved from one place to another by changing the environment variable in just one place. The other thing I'd like to show you is that there's an environment variable here, IDE load live. When a region is started from inside Eclipse, Eclipse populates this environment variable with the place where the COBOL programs have been compiled, which was newconfiguration.bin. So Eclipse provides the region with the location of the COBOL programs. When it comes time for the region to actually run a COBOL program, it needs to know where the programs are. If we had started this region outside of Eclipse, for example, just from a cast start command line, this environment variable would not be populated. Another thing I would like to do over here on the General tab is to turn off Show Local Console. The documentation recommends that you turn it on, but I think there are better ways of looking at the console besides having it pop up on your Windows desktop. So I turn it off. I'll click Apply here. Now let's switch back to Eclipse and actually run the demo. If I right click on the region in question, I can select Show Console Log. So the console log of, of the region appears within a window in Eclipse and is updated in real time. I think that's a better way of looking at the console log. In order to make the demo work, I have to start the region. So I'll choose Start. And watch the console log working. By double clicking here, I can make that go full screen. And we can watch as the region comes up. Here's the batch initiator that will run our JCL jobs. By double clicking here, I can send that back to the size it was before. To actually run this thing back on the COBOL perspective, you would submit the JCL. The JCL submission is what triggers the whole demonstration. So I'll right click on it and choose Submit to Enterprise Server. We see the console log being updated with the job that has just run. This was job 1023. It was submitted and it has ended with condition code zero. By clicking on this, on the job itself, we can see the output spool and the messages that come from the successful run of this JCL job. Back in the server perspective, I can view the spool for this region and I can show the catalog as well with an asterisk and pressing list. This is the output that was produced by the job. So that's what it looks like when it's run without debugging. So let's debug it now. Let's switch over to the documentation. Here the next step in the tutorial is to debug dynamically under Enterprise Server. And the instructions are to first enable Enterprise Server debugging. They say you should go into Eclipse and go into Windows Preferences Microfocus Enterprise Server and turn on 
Automatically start the associated server and stop service when Eclipse exits and enable dynamic debugging. So let's do that. Window, preferences, microfocus, uh, enterprise server. Automatically start the associated. So whenever you try to debug, if the server isn't started, it will be automatically started. And it's always a good idea to select this to stop servers which were started by Eclipse. When you close Eclipse, you probably want those servers to be stopped. They also recommend turning on automatically enabling dynamic debugging, so we'll apply that. Back over to the documentation, the next thing is to set a fixed port. These instructions describe setting a, a fixed uh, port instead of an ephemeral port for one of the communication listeners. To tell the truth, it works without doing this. I think this documentation is left over from an earlier version of the product, but under Enterprise Developer 2.2 2 Update 2, you don't need to do this step. So back in Eclipse, this is how we are going to debug the application. Notice that I've highlighted the project itself, and right-clicking brings up Debug As and this thing called Debug Configurations. There's another way of getting at it. This fuzzy looking button is the debug button and on the drop down here we also see debug configurations. When you click that it opens this dialog. You can configure many different debug configurations. There is an, there's one by default for JCL and it says in here JCL JCL. The debugging type uh, it says JCL settings leave blank to debug all JCL jobs. We have the option of debugging a certain job name or a number, or specifying a certain job step, or a certain program. But if we use this debug configuration, it'll just debug the first JCL job that it can find. So to start debugging, I'm going to click this debug button. It comes up with this confirm perspective switch. It wants to change to the debug perspective, which you can see by my cursor right here. This warning will pop up every time unless you choose to remember my decision and yes, I do want to open the debug perspective. The debug perspective opens and we see that the debugger is waiting for attachment. It's waiting for something to do. It hasn't started debugging right away. At the bottom of the console log here, we see that a Cobb debug remote process was created and the debugger was attached to the region. But the reason it hasn't done anything is because we haven't started the application. So to start the application, I'll switch to the COBOL perspective. And from the COBOL perspective, I'll right click on the JCL and submit it to Enterprise Server. What happens next is the debug perspective opens. It shows that the flow of control has now entered the COBOL program JCL create. That's the first COBOL program that the JCL job triggered. We see that the job was submitted and is started, and control is stopped on this uh, open statement. Here is the step button. So if we step, we can step through the code. For every statement that we land on, the values of the variables are shown here. If I click here, it means to resume execution to stop debugging and resume execution so I'll click this what has happened now is that we are in a new COBOL program JCL read the JCL job actually invoked two different programs it, it first did invoke JCL create and now it's in the middle of JCL read so it stopped uh, at the first line in JCL read and again we can step and step and if I press here, it will resume execution without stepping any further. Now what has happened is that the job has ended with condition code zero. So that's the end of the job. But the debugger is still waiting for an attachment. That's because it's waiting until the next time the application runs. I'd like to show you in uh, the Enterprise Server Administration screen for the region in question when you look at the details and on its properties this thing is checked allow dynamic debugging that is critical this sort of debugging would not work unless that were checked we told Eclipse to start the region this way but uh, it, it generally if dynamic debugging doesn't work then this is one of the things to check 
on the control and ESMAC for this region, you can look at whether or not a debugger is attached. This, this will show whether a debugger is attached to the region. There, there currently is an attachment. It would debug any job of any job number, of any step or of any program, any type of JCL. So switching back to Eclipse, I will go to the COBOL perspective and submit the job yet again. What happens is that we are back in the JCL crate program again. I'll resume and we find ourselves in JCL read again. By resuming, I can come to the end of the job. If I'd like to terminate debugging so that the debugger lets go of the region, I can use this button, terminate. When I click that, you see in the console log that the dynamic debugger has been detached and the remote process terminated normally. Back inside the Enterprise Server Administration screen on the ESMAC, if I click the dynamic debug button, you can see that no debug sessions are attached. That is the end of this video. In subsequent videos in this series, we can explore debug configurations, different ways of specifying that only certain JCL jobs or steps or programs should be debugged. We can also show how CICS debugging works. We can show how many different developers can issue debugging requests against the same running region without walking on each other's projects. And also, we can show how debugging might be done to an enterprise server running on a remote machine as opposed to the local enterprise server that has been used in this demonstration. For more information, you could head to our support line homepage or visit our community. And for more videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel.